The brain is arguably the most complex device in the universe, and so tracking activity within it remains a largely unmet challenge. The collaboration between Princeton Neuroscience Institute and Intel Labs is aimed at trying to develop the next generation of brain image analysis tools. The research that we're doing uses fMRI, human brain imaging, to view what's going on inside the brain as people think and feel. The idea behind this experiment was to try to give people insight into what's going on inside their brain so that they learn to better maintain focus over time. So we put people inside MRI machines, record their brain activity, we figure out what they're paying attention to based on the patterns of activity in their brain. So if they're supposed to be paying attention to somebody's face, for example, and we detect that they're starting to lose focus, what we'll actually do is fade the face out of the screen, showing them the consequences of what's happening in their brain. In the Intel-Princeton collaboration, we're using machine learning AI and high-performance computing to quickly analyze the data that comes off of the functional MRI scanners. The Metacortex compute cluster at Princeton is a great example of how to deploy Xeon and Xeon Phi technology to analyze very challenging data like the type we get out of brain scans. We need all the computational power that we can get. So the faster that we can decode people's thoughts and return feedback to them, the more effective the neurofeedback is going to be. So machine learning takes brain images and we train up a computer model to essentially know what that brain image reflects and then we can feed it a new image and it'll guess what it is that's going on inside somebody's mind. We created the Brain Imaging Analysis Kit so that neuroscientists everywhere could do the type of analysis that we're doing with the algorithms and machine learning at Princeton. By making it available in the cloud, we hope to make these tools available to anybody who has a scanner. Other researchers will be able to benefit from our advances and make advances of their own. The kind of thing that we'll eventually be able to use this for is to better diagnose and eventually, hopefully, treat psychiatric disorders. Depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, phobias. The idea that the cycle of science can be accelerated so dramatically is really exciting to us as scientists. There's great hope for answering long-standing questions about human nature, and that will be revolutionary. Revolutionary.